Hello guys. Welcome to Diablo the Primordial. In this video we will see what happened after Vega ran with Emperor Rudra from the battle. If you have not watched the fight between Rimuru vs Storm Dragon and Scorch Dragon then please watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification to support me. After arriving at the transfer facility room, Vega destroyed the transfer device thinking that the demons would no longer be able to pursue him. Those who stayed behind would be massacred, but that was something Vega wouldn't know to care about. Vega took a breath, and a fearless, broad grin surfaced. Vega had immense self-confidence in his powers. However, he considered the demons from earlier, the one who insta-killed Beast King Gradine, and the ones who fought with Kondo and Damrata, they were genuine monsters. Beast King Gradim was a strong individual who surpassed the average demon lords. Fuck them. Just fuck them into bits. I truly will get much stronger. Just you watch. Having suppressed his anger, he had brought the emperor to the designated location as initially commanded. You sure took your time Vega? Is Emperor Rudra alright? On the throne. A chair that only the emperor was permitted to sit on, a young boy sat on it with a relaxed look. He called out to Vega, who had just arrived, with a light-hearted tone. He was someone who should have been exterminated by Kondo, Kagurazaka Yuki. And standing behind him was a stoic-faced beauty's strongest hero, Chloe Obel. He's okay, although his head had a few screws loose. However, that demon lord Rimuru sure is a monster, that guy shut me down big time. By the way, are things all right here? The coup defeat was suppressed or something, I heard from Gradim and the others. So you're alright? Do I look like I'm alright? I was in some serious shit over here you know? I'd requested Chloe here to resurrect me on the off chance I died. Thanks to that I barely made it alive, but I actually did die. Well, thanks to that, the remaining wishes left on Chloe has dropped to one. It's all that Kondo and Damrata's fault. Be it Damrata or Kondo, them hiding their true strength was seriously annoying. Yuki explained to Vega with exaggerated gestures. While he continued on with his tale, suddenly, he fixated his gaze on Vega. Ah man, Vega, dude, you're being tracked aren't you? While letting out a sigh, he lamented. And then, holding his hand over Vega's back, a racer shot. With a single hit, he eliminated Moss's clone who was performing reconnaissance on Vega. That was a close one, a little more and they would have arrived at this place in hot pursuit. Or rather, it seems Rimuru-san's subordinates are all horrifyingly excellent for no apparent reason. We got careless for a bit there didn't we? Vega, get your act together. Yeah? I got careless there, my bad. Quite the annoyance, it seems one must not be careless with Rimuru's subordinates. Bringing Vega and Chloe along, he moved with transfer magic to a different location. At the capital's outskirts, this was where corpses were organized. The Royal Knights number 11 and below that remained in the Imperial capital, had been prepared as the raw materials for Armageddon, summoning the Angel Army. If it is merely summoned, an Angel isn't a threat, their average combat potential was only around a B plus rank. Although, generally since summoned greater demons were a rank, they were sufficiently threatening to a human country. But they'd fall short against an elite demon lord, a force of over 10 lakh B plus ranks would be more than sufficient. But, that's only considering the case of facing a human nation. While there was no problem against an older demon lord class, the current members of Octogram were on a completely different scale in terms of quality. Therefore for the first time, Yuki decided to try and incarnate the angels using Emperor Rudra. Up until now, this execution was a taboo, but considering the fact he had lost half his mind at this point, he could be tempted to put Justice King Michael's proposal was into the action and as they had erased that tracking clone, now they felt safer. Vega comprehended Yuki's actions, and just as he was thinking that, what is this place? What happened to the battle? Emperor Rudra, who was in a dazed state up until now, opened his mouth. While he was only half conscious, it seemed that he would be awakened before long. Although a bit earlier than planned, Yuki decided to move his plan to the next phase. Yuki gave Vega a wink, as he and Chloe hide themselves. Seeing that, Vega understood Yuki's intentions. This was one of several pre-determined patterns. Understanding this he quickly kneeled, and faced the Emperor. Without any changes, they'll be using the special skill of Emperor Rudra's ultimate skill Justice King Michael, and use Armageddon. Yuki was relieved that Vega understood. 
That guy, I was anxious that he'd forget since he's an idiot after all. In any case, he heaved a sigh of seeing that the strategy was going well, by using the Emperor's ability, their current goals would be accomplished. In regards to Vega's role in the series of battles of the coup defeat, it was the actualization of their ultimate goal, making Emperor Rudra successfully use Armageddon. Well, that was originally Yuki's role, but since the coup defeat plans went awry, so the baton was passed on to Vega midway. If Yuki died, then Vega would be the one to execute it. In the original plan, they'd finish subjugating Ruminus, and execute it before the final clash with Guy. But due to several unforeseen incidents, the plan was pushed forward. Your Majesty, you are all right. This Gradim was so worried. While acting as Gradim, Vega explained the situation to the Emperor. The army was wiped out. Kondo, Damrata and the other royal knights are expected to be annihilated as well. While Velgrind stalled for time, he somehow escaped with the Emperor. He recited the thought-out scenario. What did you say? Are you saying Damrata and Velgrind are still fighting? Yes, your majesty. Kondo as well as Damrata are currently engaged in a fight to the death. Is that so? Then, before it's too late, we must rescue them. I'll summon the angels. Make the preparations. But, your majesty. Without letting it show, a smile surfaced on the face under that helmet. Although he wondered, whether the emperor would actually perform the angel summoning, it looked like things were going well. Just a little more, and it's over, he thought, a natural smile broke through his facade. But, that thought was simply too naive. Oh my? That would be troublesome. Besides, there's no need to rescue them. After all, those two are already dead. A beautiful voice resounded in Vega's ears. It can't be. Vega thought as he tried to deny the notion that just came to mind. But, as if ridiculing his actions. Hey you, you dare to ruin my fun? Your life isn't enough to make up for this. So kindly cry out in pain and agony to soothe my heart. As if out of nowhere, somebody suddenly appeared behind his back. And then, he noticed the feeling of a muzzle thrust towards his head. Despite there being a helmet over his head, for some reason he clearly felt it. Wait. Repent as you're trapped in fear. Resentment fear, cursed prison of resentment and fear. With even his soul devoured, he faced endless torture by the ghoul horde. The pinnacle of anti-individual mind break magic, a synthesis of extinction King Abaddon, and a necrosis bullet, was shot. The pistol, large and crude in the hands of a lady, was fired. Being an enlarged variant of the one Kondo once held, its expected power would also increase. The effects of the magic sealed within the bullets shot from the large pistol was released in the interior of Vega's skull. With a single hit, Vega's flesh was corroded by the curse his soul, becoming prisoner to endless agony. Not given a chance to explain himself, he was shot without hesitation. As expect of Carrera. Another name on the ranking of individuals to never, ever, anger. Or rather, putting the gentlemanly Diablo aside, the ones like Testarossa and Carrera are pretty scary. In that aspect, Ultima was calm and collected. She's been called Ojo-sama by her subordinates too. This is no good. Looking at Carrera hunting the rat, Without hesitation, I began to wander away in though. They had requested to allow them to end the Emperor and the Rat, and I'd given them permission, but the result was this. Ultima was fired up about killing the Emperor, and came over to me, wishing to do it. So I decided to hand it to her. And thus, my opponent would be the mastermind. Oi, stop hiding and come out. You are there, aren't you? Yuki. Good grief, was I exposed? Can't expect less of Rimuru-san. Yuki said as he came out. Just like how he was back in the royal capital, with a nonchalant look, and a light-hearted feel as if he was meeting an old friend. I guess, it's good that you're doing well. By the way, any last words before you die? Straight to the point huh, Rimuru-san. But you think I die so easily? No I don't, but you've gone overboard. But, if you don't do any more than this, we could settle with just sealing you. So what do you say? Your freedom will be restricted, but it's better than dying right? Naive, still too naive. You haven't changed at all, still a goody two shoes. But, it's best you stop thinking you've won. It was impossible as expected huh? And so Rimuru prepared himself to face Yuki. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And please check out my other channel Top Anime Sensei for more videos. The link is in the description. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.